What if you have a trading strategy with absolutely no edge that is consistently losing money and almost has no winning trades? That's what we're going to focus on in today's review number four. And as you can see, it's going to be a slightly different review than the others we did in the past. But it is still going to be very valuable for a lot of traders because many traders will face similar situations in their trading journey. So when the trader submitted his journal for the review, he said, I'm just looking for another perspective to come up with new ideas I have either missed or not yet thought about on how to improve this strategy. And that's exactly what we're going to do, because sometimes all it takes is a fresh perspective to spark new ideas and propel you forward in your trading journey. So when we look at this journal, what we can see is it has a very low win rate of only 14%. Out of 50 trades, we have 40 losses and only seven wins. The net return is negative. It has an ROI of minus 62.97%. The equity graph in Edge Wong confirms this and it shows that the trader is losing significant amounts of money with just a very few upticks in his trading performance. Interestingly, when we go to the journal and we look at the tilt meter, most of the trades have a green tilt meter, which means that the trader has followed the trading rules and he's not deviating. This then obviously brings the question, what is going wrong and can we fix this? Typically in a review, when it comes to helping traders move forward, it's about identifying their strength. But when we go to the chart lab and then we go to the performance by setup, what we can see is that there's nothing that performs positively for the trader. He has three setups that he's trading in his journal, but all of them are losing money. One of them is not losing as much money, but there are only two trades with this setup so far. When we come to the custom statistics, he has a few different custom statistics. One stands out. This one has a positive performance. There are only four trades though, and three of them are winners. One of them are losers. However, this custom statistic is responsible for almost 50% of the winners. In total, this journal has seven winners only. And with this custom statistic, he has three. This one also performs positively. He has five trades with this and two of them are winners. So those two custom statistics are responsible for five out of the seven winning trades. That might be something for the trader to look further into to see what those trades have in common. When we go to another custom statistic, we can see there's one positively performing custom statistic, but this has only one trade. So that's not a significant sample size yet. When we go to the ATR custom statistic, we have one positively performing custom statistic where we have two winners. However, this is a very small sample size and usually doesn't mean that this will also perform over the long term. One clear thing that we see is that in the engulfing type, he has the positively performing bullish engulfing candlestick here. We will come back to his strategy in a moment, but what we can see is that out of 19 trades, he has five winners. So that means 70% of his winning trades are with this custom statistic here. All of those performance statistics are not really conclusive because the sample size is just too small. However, that's the only thing that we can find for the trader when it comes to positively performing parts of his trading strategy. In other reviews, we also always look at the trade management and will a different trade management approach help this trader? For that, we go to our exit analysis graph. When it comes to improving your trade management, what do you look for? You want to see that the price is moving a little bit in your favor so that you can move your stop loss to the point of your entry or even beyond the entry point to lock in some profits. However, in this journal, we see that we only have very few and very small green bars. This is a problem because it shows that the price is not moving into the favor of the trader a lot. On most of the trades, the price is moving straight to his stop loss without giving him any opportunity to move the stop loss to a point of break even or even beyond. When you see in your trading journal that you have a lot of green bars that are almost reaching the take profit, but not quite make it there, this could help you improve your take profit because it shows that the price is moving in your favor, but not quite reaching your take profit. So adjusting the take profit order, moving it slightly closer to your entry could help you improve your win rate because the trades that almost make it to your take profit can then be realized and turned into winning trades by using a more conservative take profit approach. And that's a very common thing that we see in many journals when the traders are too aggressive and too optimistic with their take profit orders. However, here this is not the case. The price rarely makes it into the profit and the trades fail right away. So the data shows that there is not really a way to improve the trade management because the trader has no time to move the stop loss to a better position and would help moving the take profit target closer to the entry. 
Assuming we cut the take profit in half and instead of having the take profit here, we say we're going to shoot for a half of the take profit. What would happen then? Instead of the seven winners that the trader has now, we would then have roughly 14 winning trades. That's twice as many winners. But let's go back to the home tab. What we can see is that then our win rate would double. Instead of 14%, we would have a win rate of 28%. But what we can also see is that on average he has a reward to risk ratio of 4. If we cut that in half we would have a reward to risk ratio of 2. However the problem is that with a reward to risk ratio of 2 you need to have at least a win rate of 33% to break even. So by doubling the win rate and going to 28% with half of the reward to risk ratio the system would still be underperforming and still lose money. It would be much closer to break even but still be a losing system overall. When the trader submitted his journal for review, he said that he uses a very mechanical system. What we did is that we dove a little bit into the chart book. And here you can see all of the trades with all of the screenshots that the trader has assigned and tagged in his journal. One thing that stood out and that's not very common is that he has pretty much no confluence factors, which means that he only relies on one or two signals. Without going too deep into his strategy, what he does is that on the higher time frame, typically on the daily time frame, he's looking for an engulfing candlestick. And then on the lower time frame, he's waiting for a pullback to give him a better entry price. What we have not seen though in his journal and in his trades is that he has any trend filters. It's very common to see that most of the traders are using some way of identifying the overall trend and then trying to trade into the direction of the trend. However, this trader seems to be just looking for engulfing candlesticks and then regardless of the direction of the overall market or the candlestick itself, the trader is looking for the pullback and then right away the entry. One thing to consider for the trader is implementing some way of trend filter to help him identify the overall trend direction and then look for trades into that trend direction. Another common thing that we have seen is when it comes to the technical confluence factors of a trading system is that most or many traders are using some way of identifying high probability locations on their charts. Typically those are support and resistance areas, supply and demand areas, monthly, weekly or daily highs and lows. And then traders look for a reaction or a signal around those key impact areas on their charts to time their trades. That might be another idea for the trader. And that would mean instead of taking engulfing candlestick trades, regardless of where they happen, the trader would only consider taking engulfing candlesticks into account that occur at a high impact price area. However, we cannot really say if this is an improvement or not, but what we have seen in many other journals that we have reviewed is that having a trend filter and a level filter can often help the trading system and can make it more robust. Having additional data points is also always good in a journal because it can help you understand your trading strategy better and then help you find confluence factors that positively attribute to your trading performance. Another thing that is a little bit more strategy specific is that the trader seems to have the reverse of a survivorship bias here. Because he's looking for pullbacks on an engulfing candlestick, he is missing those trades where you have an engulfing candlestick and then the price doesn't pull back but immediately moves into the favor and into the direction of the engulfing candlestick. So another thing that we would be very interested to see and could be a great suggestion for the trader is that not only looking for pullbacks on the engulfing candlestick, but also looking for those engulfing candlesticks that move directly into the direction, break the low or the high of the candlestick, and then move into the favor and into the predicted direction of the candlestick. As you can see, this time it was a little bit of a different review and we focused on other aspects of the trading journal and of the strategy. We still hope that this helped you, the trader who submitted the journal, to move forward and give you new impulses. And also for the other audience, the other edge wonk users that might be stuck in a similar situation to give you some ideas how to dig into your trading journal, how to move forward and how to set new impulses for your own trading journey.